How do I know when it started? Oh, it's okay. Let me No, I will not. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly gave a great report, though, this week. There you go. <laughs> Which I'll probably touch on some of that here. So, we'll... okay, we're ready. We've started the recordings. Okay, let's call this meeting to order. Has anyone had a chance to check out the menu? Any questions? Motion to approve the minutes as written. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I think that's all of them. I can't see the lights. Yeah, I think it's all. It's everyone. Okay. I'm assuming we have no public comment. Is mm -hmm. this online at all or no? I'm sorry? Is this being zoomed down or no? No. Okay. So no public comment. Board members report. Right Board members report. Oh my goodness. What do I have to report on? Well, we are moving right along. This week has been really a rough week. We've had um, a lot going on and primarily what I've been focused on in the last couple weeks is getting out to the schools and making sure that uh, I'm visiting with all the uh, different schools and administrating and staff and just letting them know how much we really appreciate what they are doing and just being being there for us because we could not do any of this without them, including the staff and the team that we have here at the district as well. And um, this week alone, I'll have 14 visits. So I have been like nonstop from early morning at six o'clock when some of them come in till whenever you know, it's feasible for the schools. I am, you know, I'm there for that. And so I'm trying to hit all of our schools to make sure that they all know. So that is something that I'm definitely working on. There are some other things that I'm working on um, with uh, RSM. Uh, they're doing some investigations for us. So I'll be working with them. The policy, we're working on the policy for the uh, audit committee, which uh, that was sent out the 1.171. That's the one that we're cleaning up and uh, changes will be made to this one. This one did come before the board. Uh, we had, you know, spoke about the concerns that some of the people had here, which were, you know, the, the chair being uh, one of the board members. Uh, that's one of them that will be taken off of there. So what you have is what, the, what we received as a working document. So that was one of the ones. We also were adding to, um, I didn't have mine right in hand, so I apologize. We're also working on adding more to um, who would be able to be on that board as far as um, requirements. Oh, we're trying to find the, the number. Like right now, we have certain, certain requirements or we would like certain types of people to sit on that committee. So I know that with talking to you all and speaking to several other uh, people, we'll be adding more on that uh, as far as, you know, if they have accounting background, what kind of backgrounds that they have so we can add that to this. So it's not so slim, it's more broader. And we did not, I was not able to um, get them to take off about the uh, being on one committee. So whoever will sit on this committee will only be able to sit on the audit committee. There will be no cross um, advisory committees regarding this. Yes. Got a question about yep. that. There are people that are sitting on several of the committees Correct. that are on multiple committees. Correct. Why would this be the only committee that you can't sit on both? This one you can. Uh, I brought that up twice now, and I have been advocating for this. Isn't that, just, isn't that them discriminating against this committee? Well, some are advisory committees, and some are not considered advisory committees. Like ISOC, you cannot sit on another advisory committee. You can only, if you're on the ISOC, you can only sit on that committee. You can, you're not able to sit on the others. Uh, and that's the same with this one, because of what they're, what they will be looking over. So this one, I, I did not win on that. Uh, so the vote was not there. And so it will only be, 
if you are sitting on this committee, then this is the committee that you will be on. You would have to release your other committee, unfortunately. Am I permitted to bring that up at the chair of meeting uh, when I give my report? Absolutely. And, I, and actually, I think, Daryl, I believe that you did at the last one that you were there. I believe that you did. I think maybe I need to say it a different way this time. Okay. But, you know, and they thanked me for advocating for finance. Um, however, um, I, I mean, just... Why would you give up an auditor? You know, if, let's just say Sean was an auditor. Mm -hmm. Why would you tell Sean over here that he can't be on this and he's volunteering his expertise service? He could be. He could be on this. He just he couldn't... Could be on both. He could not sit on... He could not sit on finance because it may come to be where they decide that this committee decides that this is something that they want to investigate something that you would have a conflict with so that's why so it's the broader picture is that how you understood it to be as well yeah i, I think that um, because the audit committee will be touching on so many different aspects they just didn't want it to interfere maybe with what some of the other things that were going on. And it is not an advisory committee. Correct. Um, and I think that's the distinguishing, just like ISOC, it's not an advisory committee. So it's not set up like one, it's a different type of committee. And I think that's where they were right. kind of pushing. So say if they, um, if the committee, you know, in conjunction with the board decides, um, well, I think RSM should, you know, look into whatever finance they, well, that may be something that, you, you know, they may be coming and looking at something that you would be suggesting for us to do. So they're, they're making sure that everything is separate. And there is some, I don't know if it was a statute, so I, I don't want to misspeak, uh, that prohibit that you to be on too. I, I know, I, I will tell you, I have thought this and thought this, and I have not been able to change um, the minds of the board. So I'm just trying to think how it will affect the audit. So usually internal auditors have an understanding of the process and the organization mm -hmm. and the folks that are involved. And it seems like these folks may end up being too isolated to not have that full understanding to me. Or they're, it's like putting someone in a closet and talking, you know, answering questions, and then all of a sudden pulling them out of the closet and then saying, okay, you have to make a decision on this. It's that they're dealing with partial information and without sort of the universal information of the district, if you will. So they don't know what we're looking at. They haven't heard the interviews that we've heard, our questions and our committee, those types of things, unless they go back and look at our, our or listen to our public recordings. Right. And if you so look at that would be, you know, just sort of my fear from an audit perspective that the audit committee is disjointed with the organization itself. Okay. But if you um and looking at this, it is um, they do base it off the Florida statute 2.218.391, and that means that this audit committee is to advise the school board in fulfilling its independent audit and oversight functions. So that's their main job. And then it says the three purposes for them, and that's to work with um, work with the board, the school board. Uh, they're working to plan the annual. Um, Ought to do the annual uh, audit plan, so they're going to be working to come up with that as well, and um, and then their guidance. I mean, I get a lot from you all. When, every time I'm here and you tell me stuff, I'm able to go back and share that. I learn a lot. I mean, I've never dealt with all of this kind of stuff, and it is definitely beneficial to me. And I stress the fact of the expertise that we have within this group of people, of individuals. And I know that, you know, they want, it has been said that there are plenty of other people out there in the community that we haven't tapped into. There's plenty of people out in the community that have an opportunity to come in here and be on 
many of our uh, advisory committees if they choose to do so. But again, um, it was voted down again, so I... Well, I, I can just, from a personal aspect, I look here, we have five people here, we have five people absent, and we have 16 seats available, and we have six vacant seats. Uh, so if we're having trouble filling our current advisory committees, where is this plethora of talent that is not contributing to the district? I looked at this, let's say, if Amy was a doctor and she wanted to volunteer to help out with, you know, your policy on COVID restrictions and stuff, and you're saying, no, I'm sorry, we can't use you. We have other people in the public, but yet you have experts on this particular committee. That's what my intent is to right. look for. And, and that's good. I mean, I bring all those Which concerns. Very respectful. Yes. I mean, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. Right. And I don't believe Sean is either. No, no, no. We can't, no, fill, no. This room. We can't fill this committee. We've been full. And, and this one meeting where we had three, was it three or four of us? I think it was Ray, Ken, and I. And I'm not sure if maybe he was here because the four of us were the only ones that were yeah, yeah, and then we were trying to figure out if we could actually have a meeting. There is no form requirement for these. <laughs> yeah. But th those are, those are, they are concerns with exactly what you're saying. And those are the concerns that I brought to the board. Are you, are you familiar that we did lose another member from this board? I, I did based on the fact that we're back in here. So that's something that's going to be discussed too, because I think that when we were meeting Zoom, we were able to have attract everybody. And so that's going to be something we will touch base on. So yes, what I was thinking that if there's a concern that there's, you know, there's a challenge that are lined up for the audit committee, can we put some kind of deadline saying that if by the certain date committee is not full, then the members from other committees are allowed to apply? I will certainly bring that back to them. I mean. Mary? I would think that the problem that they would be concerned about is one, that there would be a conflict. Yeah. And two, that that would impact on decision making. Um, and yet we're, we're sitting on this um, advisory, and it is an advisory, um, which would impact them. So I, I uh, agree. I can't imagine why they would not want at least one person from finance to sit on this committee. It's funny because all five of us seem to have the same opinion here. <laughs> <laughs> Paul? What we have here is a document prepared by an attorney for attorneys that they're trying to force into the internal auditor world. I was internal auditor. I also sat on information technology committee of the financial institutions. I sat on several. The only thing I was not allowed to do as an internal auditor is write policy. You can't audit what you write. So by them saying, and it, we're an advisory committee, we do not craft policy. We do not craft procedure. We make recommendations to the board, and that is completely separate and distinct. It would be different if one of us sat on the tax review committee, and we also want to serve on the audit committee. Absolutely not. I can understand some of the non-advisory committees that make total sense, but even reading through this document, sec number Letter C, to provide guidance and expertise to the school board concerning audits and investigations. Well, here's a big concern about it. By putting that in there, one of the members of the audit committee is a board member. So a board member can force feed through their guidance and expertise because, and Sean said it clearly, none of the other members in the committee are going to have expertise. Yeah, excuse, the board member is just 
She's like a, li a liaison. That's a non voting member. She is a non voting member. That's going to be changed. She, whoever, well, it's, it's a she because that's all we have right now. She's. <laughs> so after I said that, I was like, am I correcting myself? Okay, would be there, but would definitely, and that was something that we made sure that that was in there, as well as at the first meeting, a chair and vice chair will be uh, chosen because originally it was the chair was the board member was the chair and then they had to vote on a vice but a chair and a vice chair will be chosen at the first meeting and they are not they are definitely non-voting they're just they're there no one for the district I, I don't care who you are if you work within the district in any capacity you cannot sit on this you cannot sit on there no matter what and then the other part is Section 4A5. Which one? Section 4A5. The audit committee shall. An audit committee cannot perform oversight responsibilities as directed by the board. We're not an oversight function. No. Where is they, the auditors a review function? The oversight function is actually at the regulatory level. That's your oversight. Auditors make recommendations, which are then enforced by the board. Correct. And the shall is a permanent language, not an optional language. Correct. I'm and sorry, where is the shall? Where are you seeing? Oh, on the top. top. Okay, Maybe thank you. Responsibility. Yeah, the word shall. It means it's required. Yes, it yes, must. yes. Okay. Then also, and here's the part where I get a real concern. 5B. 5B. Okay. I know we need to comply with sunshine. However, if there's an investigation that's being spurred by legal, that is an exception to sunshine. You do not have to discuss. We have a fear that the superintendent is embezzling X number of thousands of dollars. You don't need that in the public domain because it's somebody's conjecture that has not been justified yet. So there is no way that the committee has the right to put that out into the public. It's an executive session discussion with the internal auditor. If that audit is pursued, then it becomes part of the public domain. But somebody's saying, well, I heard a rumor that something is going on. I think we can investigate it. We've now given Week News and the news press and everybody else fodder to go after whoever they want to go after. Right. No, that's thank you. In more ways than it should be. And, and that's add, why sons have excluded people. And, and to add to that, the preliminary findings are different than audit reports. I know that there I'm are sorry, I'm sorry, say that again, please. <laughs> preliminary findings are different than audit reports in that I can go through and do management letter comments on an audit that may not end up because my understanding was either not full or complete. And I came to an incorrect assumption. And we had that happen actually with the Gibson report with human resources. They took it and you approved the task on a couple of things that you said. Had they taken the time to speak with her, those would not have been fine. And she made it very clear at this committee that that occurred. And then was the one occurred? Yes. She came back a few times on that one. And then it was R7 as well that when they did their risk assessment, that they didn't go through a thorough enough interview process with the owners of each of the process in order to draw an opinion. So I completely agree with Sean. Nothing should be hidden from the public. You could have an additional section to the audit report, which would be um, recommendations, not um, deemed high risk, or however you want to risk rate it. But as the public should be made aware of all recommendations coming from the auditors, it's their right to know, but they also need to understand the risk of it. And so it's right, but it's a preliminary report. There is no risk rating to it. So a five cent difference in somebody's drawer is equal to a one billion dollar 
George Wallen the construction project. <laughs> <laughs> there is no differential in the risk. And also comes down to the board's comfort level. Does the board really need to be bogged down with a five cent difference? In order to feel, yeah, I need to report everything I found. At the board level, is that something we really need to bring somebody to task on? Okay. And that's where, and I fully agree with Sean, that's where the requisite expertise of the committee members needs to be justified. I know each board member will be choosing a member. There needs to be set criteria for what those individuals the professional designations that they have, their education that they have. They need to be it needs to be ensured that they don't violate conflict of interest. There should be one questionnaire that is brought out for every applicant. And if you fail on any of them, there can be no gray. If you fail on any of them, that person is refused from being on the office. Up to date on your continuing education. And, and, and actually, continuing education in the field. Yes. Not technical business and not, you know, stuff ancillary to your profession, but for. Well, that's what I'm know. looking for where it says um it does and it goes in a little bit on um, oh yeah so three three c it doesn't go deep enough because what it's now done if i'm a former canadian citizen or i am currently a canadian citizen and i am a i am not a cpa but you're in charge of accountants you would not exclude anybody who's from canada you would exclude anybody from the uk because they do not have a cpa they do not have a cia well, I think they were adding that. The CIA, what was the, there were several that they were. Yeah, there was a group of them that they had gone to. I don't remember what they were. I remember CIA, I remember that. CIA is here. They have CIA and they have CPA, but they don't have CIA, they don't have chartered accountants, they don't have certified risk manager. There are so many designations that are out there. I think, though, in that it says um, the board members shall take care to choose individuals with appropriate qualifications and background to succeed in these position in, in this position, such as a certified public account. I don't think they're limiting it to this. I'm. I think they're saying things like this. Yeah, but the, the problem that I see is that if if you, Paul, I'm going to ask you if you will write some of those down, or Sean, or whomever, anyone from here, and send those those lists to us because I think that's good for us to know because when we're choosing I know I personally make sure that I call and I have conversations with those who I choose I can't say that that happens with everybody so in retrospect that would give me okay what is your background and then if I see that you know that helps me to make a decision on who is best to, to sit on that committee because I, I do honestly call and speak to everybody before I pick who's I'm asking. The other thing is, is when we're handing these out, they should be marked draft. They're, well, no, these are not, I'm just, this was a short these, notice, these so. These really should have draft across them, because what if this gets out into the wild? I mean, well, I, I think well, the, underlining, the underlining shows that it's not in final form. Right, so. right. but just have a marked draft, even a watermark or something, so that if so that it doesn't get brought up. Well, this that, can come. Hey, your policy says this. No, this is on this is on board docs, mm -hmm. so anybody can go online and and see this or print it out if they choose to. Yes, they can. It does say adopted by one board. So it's not a draft. Yeah, this is not. Where does it board? It's not, it's not adopted. No, it's not adopted. It just says the word adopted. There's, There's no I date know. behind it when it is adopted. We're talking about things being misconstrued. That is one thing that can be misconstrued. Yeah. <laughs> so back, I, I, I get what you're saying on the background. Got it. And we also have to be careful. About I don't know if we could do that in board docs, but. Expertise. I'm sorry? To, to see, I would remove the word expertise. Because we could be working on an audit, 
And not every bird body in that room has expertise in a particular area that's going to be audited. We can all offer opinions, but that doesn't mean that everybody's opinion should carry the same weight because some have that requisite expertise and some don't. Like if it's a tax question, yes, I'm an internal auditor, I have all the credentials, everything else. I'm going to look at Sean and say, Sean, I know very little about it compared to what you know about it. You're more the expert than I am. But I can still offer an opinion. But ultimately, it should be a weight factor assigned to that expertise that individuals in the room bring. Somebody may have a more operational background. And that's why they really need to go through the credentials. Because it doesn't necessarily have to be a financial background. Somebody with a strong operational background is of extreme value to this committee. Some human resources background. Well, and I think that they were some of the ones that were um, spoken about as well, because the fact that it, it is a huge, I mean, it's very broad. So a lot of those, um, like you're, you're saying, like, this one knows more than you may know, or you all know more than I know on this. So I hate. So yes, I, I get that. So if you could, if you would be willing to do that, or anyone here, and just. You can send it to myself or, or Miss Barbara if that's okay. Mm -hmm. And then she can send it to me and then I will be able to have them look at it and put it on. One thing also I want to make sure is that egos don't get bruised. Does it say here each one kind of has ownership of a member of the audit committee and that audit committee member is serving as a term of that individual? It's, it should not be. What it should be is each board member should be able to recommend individuals with the appropriate expertise ultimately should be a board decision hopefully you'll get a list of 25 candidates and the board will choose the best seven paul where where are you looking at it talks about three are you still on the, um, are you on uh, three days. thank you oh one of its own okay i, I see what you're saying yeah, I don't, yeah, that doesn't sound right. Okay. It, there was a section here that talked about serving the length. Your position serves the length of the board member who appointed you. Why not let it be? I think B. Member. I think B is talking about the board it's member a, liaison. It's a, okay. The term of board member shall coincide with the term of the board member. Oh. That's how they did that when they started with. They did this when they started with the ISOC. I think is what why they went with this because <coughs> some people picked a two-year person and some people picked a four-year so that way it was starting to rotate so once that your two-year your, your four-year would go and then the other one would come on maybe the four-year so i believe that's how this came into play because that, that's how it was done with isoc mm -hmm. we had a four-year person but we had two actually so we had a four-year and a two-year they so, should be beholden to the board, not to the board member. I'm sorry? The, it's the, it's the, your, your term is the length of the term of the board member that put you in. It's the term, oh, not the board member. No, I don't think so either. Because that's how they... That's put, how they're doing it with ISOC. That's how they started ISOC. Now, it, because it's already been going, it doesn't, it, it just continues. Yeah, it's a rotating like this one. one of, you know, a couple of us will be done at the end of this term. And after you're buying another term next year, and then there's the phone. Yeah, so that you keep the four year and the, the two-year. So the two-year two would then turn into the four-year, and then the four-year would be leaving after the two-year. With my recommendations. And then it'd be four-year, four-year. There should be a list of candidates that each of the board members feel comfortable moving forward. Ultimately, the board should be reviewing the qualifications of each, getting a proper makeup of the members, of those seven, figuring in diversity, expertise, everything else, and if two of them come from Melissa, so be it. So one board member doesn't get one of their choices on the audit committee. Big deal. It shouldn't matter. It should be the seven best. And the board when deciding one through seven should say the first two are the two that we deem to have the best, most credential. They get a two-year term. The next two get a one-year term. The next one fill out 
Yeah. yeah. It, it, it does not mean um, that I have to pick two people in District 4 or there's two people from this district. I can pick whoever I want to pick. So that's what it is. I tend to try to look at people in my area because I represent that area. So I want to make sure that, you know, I have somebody. But if I don't have anybody that's in that area, I'm going to reach out to whoever else is on the list that I have spoken to. And then I will, uh, I will talk. But if I'm looking at that and I see that they don't have the expertise as somebody over here, I'm certainly going to call the other people because we get everybody's information. It's that that what's happening, the way this is structured, if I'm appointed, and I'm in your district, if I'm appointed by you, perception will be whatever Debbie Jordan wants, Paul Cohen's going to be her champion on the other committee. Yeah, no. That's going to be public perception. I, because of because the fact it says should this. should be totally independent and objective in choosing the seven members of that committee, and it should not matter how many come from a particular board member. Yeah, but what should matter is do we have the seven best people? But I think Paul, what this is trying to do is to make set up a rotation, rotation so that you don't have everyone rotating out at the same time. You keep no, people. I that, Billy. What this is saying also is that. Each board member is going to choose a member of the committee. Well, that's what they do, though. Yeah, we all they do. We have it, to. It, it should be, this is, for this one of over everything else that we have going on here. For true independence, it can't be that way. When well, I, when I was hired as the internal auditor for any financial institution, it wasn't the auditor chair that interviewed me and said, "Yay!" He gave me the green light as well as three other candidates. I got. The role of the entire board that was put through the run with that, and ultimately the whole board, excuse me, from the room and made a decision, yay or nay on me. And if I it offended the audit committee chair because he felt he liked me, that wasn't the case. Okay, so how this works is that if I, like Elena, you're North Fort Myers, right? Yes. We had conversations. I, I, I'm, she's, not be, she's not beholden to me, you know? She's here to do a job and to rep to me for me, I think she's representing North Fort Myers. So and her information is then once I've read everything and I've made the phone calls and I've chit chatted whatever and found out and I've called, like I said, I've called everybody that I have on this list. Then that goes to the board. And now the board looks at that. The board has to vote on everybody. If there's somebody that we feel that should not be on that. I don't care who put them in there. We can pull that person out of that line. We have the ability to do that because we, at the end of the day, we have to vote on, yes, we are going to allow them to sit on the committee or no, we're not. So we do see all of that information and it, it, it behooves us to read all of that as well to make sure that we do know who, who everybody is and who's sitting in these seats, because you are our, our advisory committees. I just want to make sure it's the seven best people. Of course. Maybe maybe it should say recommended by instead of appointed by. Well, I, I think I think the, that if you look at the own, that own part probably needs to be changed because that does sound like an ownership. Yeah. And I think if the, because really all you're doing, even for these committees, is you're making a recommendation. Correct. The board as a group approves or denies That's that recommendation. That's very true. Very true. So I think if that read, the board member that recommended them. So the board shall recommend. Yeah, I think if it says recommend versus appoint, it might be better. Well, absolutely. Like in, but you're talking about on. In H. It says the term of voting members shall coincide with the term of the school board that appointed them. Uh, the, it may be recommended them. Uh, and so he's talking each about. The individual is not appointing, it's the, yeah, it's the, the board, board, that board that's appointing. appointing. Right. So, but you're speaking on 3B, uh, three three. right? 3B? Three oh, 54, not B? Yeah, yeah he, they went to H. Because I said the same thing. B is really the board member. That, that's when they said it was. Okay, H. so. On this uh, line 55, the first word says appointed. Okay, Make recommend. Recommend. Because the board as a whole appoints them. It's Correct. The, the board member recommends. Maybe that would better yep. know what you guys are trying to say. And the same way on line 60, 
the member who recommended that committee member. It said it's elected? Mm -hmm. In I. It's yes. like a minor in I. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it removes selected and put recommend. So it's recommend, recommend. Mm -hmm. And then try to avoid appointed or, or selected because that really does look like you're putting more people in first. You're right, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. And that's a word you can use introduce when you're tired of using recommend. <laughs> okay, so Okay. You know how much they're gonna love me, I'm just going to just sharing this with you all. Should we send Paul with you? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the thing is, is that this needs to be a live document. No, it needs uh, true. To be a working document until it's time. Yeah, exactly, it is. <laughs> and and you can't have attorneys write audit material. Right. It's just like Tallahassee is saying that you have to have an audit for this. When they don't want an audit, they just want someone to look at it from the outside. Got it. So maybe Daryl, you also. That's where the misunderstandings come from. Words have meanings. Yeah. Maybe Daryl, when you do your presentation to the board, you might want to mention a couple of these things. That I, I would. Yeah, that would be wonderful. Yes. Because I mean, they hear this from me every time I walk here. Every time I'm sitting up there. <laughs> They, they think I'm being, yeah, how much are you guys paying me? <laughs> but um, yeah, because I do. What, what you say to me, I bring back there. And you know, I'm very passionate about the fact that you believe that you should be able to sit on both. So I have been fighting that fight for you. And uh, so Daryl, when you give your uh, yours, do it. But I'll bring up all these the other changes. And the only other thing is, and that's in section 107. You call for excluding whistleblowing from the public forum. Wait, wait, wait. So it's not just if there's a legal discussion. If there's something alluding to whistleblowing, it's a whistleblower complaint about something going on that should not be for public consumption until the auditor investigates and reports back yay or nay on it. Right. For the record, John Shannon has been trying to get on Zoom. I know. I sent him an email and told him we were in. Yeah. Yeah. He he tech, he emailed and I'm like, oh, we're in person in media room one and two. So can we put him in the Zoom? And um, throw his face. Like we don't. We don't have it zoomed. <laughs> oh, he didn't set anything up. So. Okay. Chairman. Yes. Outside of this, I have one request. We all know the guidelines for a number of meetings. And this I'm not dealing with whoever missed tonight's meeting. It should be excused absent and not count towards their strike. Is that a motion? That is a motion. I'll second that. Any discussion? All in favor of making those recommendations of the board? Aye. 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 Motion passes. That was the best. Really? <laughs> hey, that's that's only fair, especially when you have John who. And there's a lot of members trying to get in, and the other three is able to. This would not come to a business room. This should not be in Yeah, and we're we're going to try to see. I know that I had talked to the ladies earlier, but I think we're going to try to see if we can um, see if there is a way that we can do both. I mean, because of the governor's order for us to return to meetings face to face. I know that sometimes they're not looking at everybody else's, you know, feelings or how they, you know, how comfortable they are or not. And I, I would just hate to lose people, you know, in committees if, if there was a possibility of us being able to do some type of joint, like hybrid, just like we're doing at the schools. But I don't know if we have the, the space, technology, or the rooms that would allow us to make that happen. So. I'm going to follow up on that one as well. 
Well, also you have to look at tax concerns. Yes. And um, that's called an accommodation. Yes. I don't think the governor meant for volunteers to be held to those standards. I understand paid employees and board members. I just can't see him making a decision for volunteers, especially. I mean, there's some, probably some committees where you have to have elderly people, you know, that are already up there just lending their expertise. You can't expect them to risk their life to sit in a meeting, an unpaid meeting. And there's a lot of them, you know, a lot of people care. I got a few customers that just talk to me how they can't wait to meet me and see me, but they're not leaving their house. They're scared to death. And I know that we received, I don't know where it's at, it's somewhere here. Uh, we did receive an email from the attorney mm -hmm. with that, um, with the statute that stated that we had to come because we were trying to keep it as long as we possibly could on, you know, Zoom because it, you have a great turnout mm -hmm. in Zoom. Much better. Everyone has. Yeah, so everybody's there. We just break the law like everyone else and uh, <laughs> let, them, let them come after us. And, and it's because it's an, and, and because it is considered an advisory, there's which we're learning that it's a difference of advisory committee and district committee. Is that what they were saying Maybe yesterday? Just trying to there's, yeah, there's different. If it's a, a advisory committee to the board, that's one thing. And if it's a district like the student advisory, we're changing that because the student council, because they're not an advisory board. So, yes, we're trying to figure out the, the language. And, but if, you know, based on what we had sent to us from, you know, state, that's pretty much what we, that's why we're here today. I'm glad we're here personally. But I do think we should be able to offer to people that do not feel comfortable right. for the reason. Or, God forbid, one of us was at home sick, but we still wanted to attend. With Zoom, you can sit out back, or like Sean, you can everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was the attendance requirement. Correct. This is a requirement to get kicked off this committee. Correct. If you miss it, even if it's not your fault. And, and I and I think because I know we had spoke about this, there is like a stipulations if like you were at work and you, something for work and you had to call in, you could call in, but you could only call one, one person. person. <laughs> yeah. So that's not conducive for what we need. So if there is a way that we could do the hybrid, like home connect, yeah. you know, yeah, maybe. So. But we'll we'll have to There's try to we'll have to yeah. check on that. Yeah, in its Florida statute, 1001.372 is the one she Thank referred you. to. And said it, it the requirements for in-person quorum at a physical meeting location. So. 1001.372 is the one she referred it to. But there is a quorum uh, definition in sense. Not well, there is not for you in the summer, is what they, I, they stated last no, yesterday, no, right? No, I think quorum for us is the uh, majority of the people that are in person, is how I think they defined it. So mm -hmm. I don't know. So we don't have a quorum. We don't have a so you couldn't vote on anything? Well, we don't, we, we don't, have, we don't have, have to have a quorum to do our work. Not on this committee. We could vote. Yeah. 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 Yeah
this is what we have come up with because it is recorded but as far as the visual part of it is what was in question last time it is the visual thing yes and, and uh i i can tell you from feedback and you know you knowing people from the community that may not feel comfortable speaking live on camera to you know lee county and we're completely putting their opinions to the side which are, are rich and, and informing and and may i ask did, have they brought that to you yet? Yes. Okay. And what was the... We, we don't want them recorded. Okay. I mean, audio recording is perfectly fine, just so we have a record of what happened. But uh, live recording, video feed, I, I think that with the way that technology has grown in the past year, with these deep fakes and things like that, that it could be manipulated. Yeah, and we did send out the concerns of that and in light of, too, what had happened. Yeah. So that was all shared with um, Ms. McClung, and she sent that out to the um, all the other advisories. Okay. So we just want to try to make sure we get everybody's input, so that way it's a stronger argument. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for reminding me. I'll check on that. For a future conference, for future meetings, does anybody have suggestions that yeah. pertain to finances? So I just want to remind us that the, the purpose of our committee is um, to provide input, advice, and support in preparation of the operating in the capital budget. So just, you know, when we're trying to think of things that we want to discuss, I think if we keep in mind what our, um, our, our goal for this committee is, I think that that will help us too. But we have nothing else lined up from this point forward, so we were looking for things that you all wanted to, us to bring back, so. Um, I'd like to know about the funding that's coming down. We should know, we should know the session that we in and have a sense of the funding, not just um, the state, but the, with the relief there. So we did, um, it was probably two meetings ago, um, I had Sarah from my office come in and do the CARES Act, so that was the first one. We have gotten notice that we have our, we will be receiving a second ESSER is what they're calling it. Um, it's going to be approximately $84 million. They have not told us, um, well, when they sent it down, we have to just sign a thing, it's the superintendent has to sign it, we have to send it back. With the second grouping, we don't have to do a budget like we did the first one. So the first one, we had to tell them exactly what we were gonna do, how we were gonna spend it. The second one does not have that um, specification to it. What they did tell us was things you couldn't do with it. You couldn't buy um, awards or you couldn't do things like that with it. So they gave us some not to do's. They also said to keep in mind that there could be, it may need to help with some loss of state funding so, and of course, we will not know that until probably May. Um, we'll get some ideas, but it'll be May before we know for sure what our state funding looks like to know whether we have gaps that we have to fill. They um, recommended that we not use it for reoccurring expenditures. So when the money goes away, um, we don't have to worry about trying to cover that cost. And that we have to have our first set of money spent before we can use the second set of money, which brings some concerns for me specifically because our first set of money was we had said it it was a two-year pot of money we used it like a two-year pot of money and now we're kind of getting kickback because we haven't spent it all but what we did is we looked at what did we need to accomplish over two years to bring that learning that gain that loss in learning back up for students and and like you can't just do it in one year especially when they're not all back face to face so what could we do? And we looked at over a two year period what that would be. Well, now they're saying that we have to have that money spent first. 
So um, now we're going to have to relook at what we did and try to do what we can do, you know, move some things into this ESSER 1 and then move maybe some of those things into that ESSER 2 so that we can ha utilize both sets of funding, especially since the one might have to help us fill a, a loss in funding gap. So we're working on that, but we're looking at about $84 million. We do have to share that again with our charters and um, privates and stuff. So we'll be working on that. And I, I think yeah. it's just charters. I'm sorry, not private system. I think initially we were having to expand, but on the train track, how can it be an existing um, you mean on the ESSER 1, if it has to be spent or, I, I don't know. They haven't given us, all they did was send out the spreadsheet with the amounts and then they said, here's just some basic information. When we have more information, we'll have a webinar. And so we're waiting on that webinar to kind of see what it is. And I think the state's probably waiting to see what kind of funding gap there's going to be so they know kind of like what to do with it. But um, that's what we know so far. We don't have anything else. So those that's are the sets. I'm sorry? Do you think we'll have that information by the May? By May, we should know our, what our funding's going to look like and um, be able to bring that back in May. Can we put it, does anybody have an objection to putting that on the May meeting? We'd have to approve to go through the summer. We have to approve to go through the summer first, because May is, is, yeah. is May a yeah. summer meeting? Yeah. Yes. So, once you approve that, then. So, what we have is April left? Mm hmm. Wow. Okay. Yeah, sure. So, I, I, I have a question on the new CDC guidance that's out regarding HVAC and uh, increasing the circulation of air and CO2 monitors in the uh, classrooms. Have we looked or, or done anything in respect to that? Um, because that might be a way to draw down those stairs when it's quicker. Mm -hmm. um, so that you can draw down on the EOS twos. Um, and I, I think that that's just a, a good thing to do in general because I know that that is a major uh, capital outlay that we've uh, been relying on the sales tax funding for, and that if we can use that to actually build new seats, uh, that would be helpful uh, to our, our capital budgets as well. Yeah. Now we we have um, the maintenance department has gone and done things to help with the circulation in the schools, so I know that they have been working on that, and that is an area where we could probably look at moving some of those expensive expenses into the ESSER um, in order to try and utilize those dollars so that we can access the other dollars too. Yeah, because I know we, we have some pretty old and expensive uh, repairs and replacements of those HVAC mm -hmm. systems. And we, we've got safety concerns, you know, at certain schools. I mean, we, we just they're old and they need maintained, and without the maintenance, it's hard to keep students in there and safe. Yeah, and one and they, our maintenance department has been focusing on our HVACs over these last um, four or five years. That has been a big focus for them, replacing the old ones, and we have and you know keeping the maintenance up and keeping the filters changed and all of the cleaning. I think we do quarterly cleanings. Before all this happened, we were doing quarterly cleanings, and now I think they've switched them to um, probably, I think, monthly is what they're doing now and cleaning out the HVA systems. Yeah, the filtration, I mean, we can mm -hmm. probably put a couple of filters. I don't, I don't know what's being done, but maybe that might be a good April meeting where we sort of figure out what, what they're doing with air circulation and, and construction. Is that maintenance or is that construction? Uh, that's maintenance. Maintenance handles the HVACs. Because maintenance while we're in COVID and with the summer going to be only six weeks, that may not be a bad idea because what if they're going to have a much shortened summer to be able to do what they need to do? And I'm sure you know that's costing the system money. Okay. Does everybody like that as an idea for April? Yeah, I will tell you that currently we do not have a director of maintenance. So um, I'll be relying on some other people in that department to help me with that. So. <laughs> Yes, sir. 
for one of our summer meetings, what I would like to find out is real estate right now, you can't keep your inventory. We have land. I would like to find out what's going on with all the land that we had identified that the district could not use for construction of new schools. Have we taken advantage of the increased builder appetite for land and obviously the inflationary value of those, those parcels? Secondly, have we readdressed our construction costs because construction costs are estimated to go up by 30 to 40 percent before year end, if not more. And it's great that we have the sales tax and everything else, but we can end up having a shortfall instead of being in a good financial position going forward. Yeah, so I do know that on the land, we have looked at all of the land um, that we own, and they have gone through, and the parcels that are not large enough to house a school have all been put on the market um, for sale. And the parcels that are that have enough room for schools, and then some have been looked at to divide up and sell some of it off. Um, and so I know that we have been looking at that. Um, and they have been looking at all kinds of stuff with the land. I would be hesitant at selling it at an open market at this point. If we can use it for housing, that would be fantastic because we have an issue in securing qualified staff because of housing cost, uh, and, and this has been, you know, a, a, the recycle ring. Uh, for years, but I would also like to see the district possibly granting some money up front for down payment assistance if they're employed for such and such amount of time, and then possibly getting that forgiven if they stay with the district for five years. That may solve some of our turnover issues because housing is such a huge cost here for employees and especially on their salaries, it could be a way to kill two birds with one stone. You know, we build affordable housing for our staff. We, we allow people to buy housing. We keep good staff. We lower our turnover costs because I know that those are huge. Yeah, I know the board has talked to us about the, the desire to look at affordable housing. So we have actually been meeting on affordable housing and having some discussions. We as a school district are not allowed to offer housing to our teachers. So we have to do it in another way. So um, we are working on some things we are sending um, a survey out to um, our, our teachers to find out what type of housing and in what area the need is for that, um, trying to figure out how we can better um, serve them, you know, whether it's giving, you know, providing land at a very good cost for someone to help our teachers with that, you know, what would that look like? So we are working on that. Yeah, and um, can we not just do that, uh, the land in Cape Coral? Yes, there, there's a land that we're looking at in the uh, 15th, I think. Yes, I think it's the, is it Littleton property that's? Yeah, I believe it is. It's, it's back off, there. It's off of Littleton. We're, um, we're um, selling some land there, and they're going to do some housing, and um, we're working on some things to, for our teachers to have a first look at that housing. It yes. might be beneficial for this committee to sort of hear those ideas and whoever's in charge of that, just well, be, just from a finance standpoint and an operation standpoint. I was trying to look. I was trying to find that because I know we just. I was trying to look for the slide on that um, because it was just yesterday that. Jesus, I don't know. It could have been Monday. Yeah, it was. I, I, don't know what it wasn't, I didn't see it the Mondays, but. But I know that um, we did speak about it, and it is like 15th, 14th, and it is in the Cape North area. And I know that they, the housing, um, the Lee County Housing Authority tried to do that uh, the last time, and they, I believe that they lost the, um, the grant. They didn't get the paperwork in time. So now they're redoing it, and I cannot remember the name of the company that um, is doing it, but it is definitely for affordable housing over there. But it is in that, like, back over, like, around the curve by Littleton. Yeah, we have to be careful with that commentary. 
because builders will pass along impact fees. So yes, they will create affordable housing. However, on the tax side, you have impact fees. The Northwest Cape does not have sewer and water. Mm -hmm. It's well and septic. They're pricing the seniors out of parts of Cape Coral because they're getting bills of $35,000 for the conversion, plus another $1,000 for the book up. And they gave you a choice. You pay it down, or your real estate taxes will increase by two to three times, if not more, because if you're homestead, they can increase by five or six times, so they've now priced people out. So it's great that we come up with this idea to sell to a builder who is taking into account how low it's capable of not affordable. What? Yeah, they call it yeah, affordable on our, on our, right. on our thing. At the same time, yeah, my initial cost may be $150,000, but my real estate taxes can go up exponentially on me, and I'm priced out. And what's to stop somebody from taking advantage of it now? And with how increased values are occurring very rapidly in real estate, buying something for one fifty. Literally slipping it at the closing table for two hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars to somebody else, and yeah. because they were the first one on the list, they were able to take advantage of it. Yeah, it and, needs to be and we we talked good. about things like that, but there's really there's not a lot of control we can have over that. Yeah, our hands are tied. Um, being a school district, we can only do so much. Well, we can because they did it in New Jersey and. New Jersey has not very little to be proud of, but the one thing they should be proud of is they coordinated a full blown agreement and it's an inter town, not inter county, influence inter company agreement. They created housing for teachers, firefighters, police officers, deemed to be essential services, and what they did was you buy the house, you play it for this price. When you sell it, you are limited, you are capped at how much profit you can get for it. And that is it. You don't get anything more, therefore the value does not continue. And it was Mount Laurel Housing, and I brought this up at the Table Housing Coalition, I brought it up at this meeting, and it's something that construction really needs to take a close look at. Because there are all ways to do it. I'm not saying the school district is going to own the builder and general contracting, but it's something that when they negotiate a contract with the ultimate buyer of the property to make sure that it's going to be utilized in the proper manner and not somebody's guessing somebody is asked to get the property for you to sit down. And hope that the school board kind of forgets about it and then they kind of do what they want to do. That's where my concern comes in. Yeah, I'm talking okay. before the meeting. Mm -hmm. It's not enough inventory. People are literally knocking on other people's doors for inventory. We don't need realtors to sell our land right now. The, the, the builders, builders will be knocking on our door for those land for us. We can do it. Like, we can do it at our local agreement. Yes. So we have to sign it at the closing table. Exactly. Or within a certain number of years, like Sean said. You must remain in that residence for X number of years. Period. You're not selling. And the only escape clause would be um, change, significant change of circumstance. But otherwise, nope, I just decided I'm going to move because I cannot cash out. But it might be interesting to pursue this line of thought because it's a way of retention. Dr. Pruitt just walked through and said she's she doesn't see good things in the future for staffing. Yeah. <laughs> so what I would what I would like to suggest though is like as a district, we're still working through some of these things, even what our options are. So maybe later after we've gotten some of the options, maybe we can bring them in and have those discussions, if well, that would be. I said a summer meeting. I didn't say yeah. April, yeah. May, I said a summer meeting. Yeah. Can we vote, can we yeah, vote one can. going through the summer? That way at least we did not we address that. It seems like that's you know, it seems like that's one of the big elephants in the room is we have one meeting left. Everybody seems to have ideas about what we can do during the summer. Can we 
Is there a motion to go through the summer months? If nothing else, they don't count against people that don't show up to the meetings. Mm -hmm. I, I move mean, that we meet through the summer on the uh, same Wednesday, third Wednesday. Is it the third Wednesday of each month during the uh, summer months? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? By turn, I'm on my second year, I think. Um, You're still on at least until the end of the I, summer? I, I, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Over the summer, you still come? Okay. It's not mandatory, it won't count against yeah. you for next year? I did the next year. <laughs> okay, so what we'll do is at the next meeting in April, um, we can bring back some dates uh, based on those just to make sure that they align with everything. Can I add to the real estate issue? Uh, uh, the hat talk about housing. Housing now is unaffordable, even for people that are making a good income more than our teaching. And um, now um, they have, um, you know, a house to go on uh, on the market, and they may have forty people that bid to the school and bid it up. Um, so um, some, something has to be done. You won't get new teachers coming into this area like it is now. I have a bunch of clients right now that have bachelor's degrees, like. Told Dr. Perlitt about it. They, they're staying at the hotel right now. I can't even find them an Airbnb that's affordable. There's absolutely nothing that I can find them. The closest thing, considering they don't have a job and they just came to move here, what am I going to put them in? Something 2500 I'm sure you see what I'm saying. There's been out and yeah. most people won't move into these homes that are typically in 1700 because they're falling apart. Those were your down the people up on. Yeah. But it is a I think it, that's but that's a countywide issue and I think that everybody's really realizing that this is something that needs to be looked at as well as other things in the area. It's another issue that yes. they're finding with their own students. So teachers. Yeah. And uh, someone called someone else on the school system called me yesterday and she said to me, you know, one of my problems is trying to get a hold of my students and I put up to them with students. I didn't expect them to show up. But everybody is trying to, I think now they're really being, we're really, really seeing it and the effect that they are trying to work on this together collectively. Right. But before we sell that land, let's, let's, let's not allow that to go into the open market so that everyone can put their 15% on it. Let's, we've got a sunk cost there that we bought when prices were low. Right now, prices are high. And we need to we, we need to keep that inflation down as much as possible, I think. Uh, just, you know, knowing the market, knowing what's out there, and, and you know, having, having people around me that, that know the real estate market. And uh, we, can, we can probably do a lot more with that land, either internally, locally, you know, with agreements and, you know, maybe do something with the health system, maybe do something with the county, it, just to- And that one is with the county though. All it's with government an organization are gonna have the same issues. Okay. Birdside? I, it might be. Yeah, that one is with an organization. Well, the county's giving out CARES dollars and helping people with rent and the utilities. I've heard for a year. I haven't seen anything. That keeps so. people in their homes. Well, it doesn't build new homes. Yeah. And that's, the, homes. that's the issue. Well, there's other issues. It, the system is broken. It's got to be fixed. But when my concern comes in, and the reason I'm raising this about the land, we have a responsibility for the, to the taxpayers. And the taxpayers need to understand if we're not selling the land, because everybody knows the land values are at a record high right now. If we're not selling the land for record high prices, we better be able to justify why we're not doing it and why we are opting to sell that land at a discount to a reputable builder who is not going to put their greed at the expense of everybody else. 
And that's where we have to be very careful how we go about this process. Mm -hmm. That's why I would have this as a summary of the discussion, okay. because it's not a cut and dry 15 minute conversation. And this can run two or three workshop meetings during the summer. Okay, and I'll um, try and get someone in. Uh, these are very much the conversations that we've been having, so. And then I just wanted to, on Mr. Williams, um, the uh, HVACs projects, they, as Ms. Letcher said, they are working on it. Cape Carl, um, Cape Carl High School, Fort Myers High School. Uh, so they're just, they're going Orangewood. So there's a lot of them that are lined up and they're already beginning all that. Great. Yep. Have, has the district looked into CAC monitors? I, that I don't know. That I do not know. <laughs> I mean, this really does affect the finances of the district because if we don't have employees that have a place to live, staff, that's a, quite a big problem. Dr. Perler comes in every single time this time of year. He usually delivers 500. And I asked the question earlier, she started to laugh at it, which meant I'm taking a thousand or more are coming back. It's about, I believe it's about to be a lot worse, you know, and some of it, in my opinion, is due to CDC guidelines. It's tough on the teachers to sit there with the mask on. Other financial aspect. So I, I think it's a big problem that I think it does fall to the district for some sort of assistance if they want to be able to staff their schools appropriately. Is my opinion. Okay. So we have something for the April meeting. Mm -hmm. We have April with the maintenance HVAC funding in May. Um, we'll do the land and housing one other day over the summer when I can see who the, when they can come in, and then what else do we want? I can't think of the term, but what about uh, acquisitions, purchasing? I can't think of the term that's used. Procurement? Thank you. <laughs> I've been drawing a blank, but that's why I keep that my phone trying to pick up the word. That may not be a bad idea because of the rising prices due to the economy and due to supply and demand. That could definitely affect how the district operates going into this next budget cycle for the 2021-2022 school year. Does anybody disagree or have an opinion? That's the other thing that's discussed. I mean, because we're we're going to know what our what our allocations are for the uh, rescue plan. We're going to know what the budget is from the state, and if we're getting a per student, you know, cut or increase, and what handcuffs we have uh, with that money. Um, so the budget might be a really good thing to talk about. Possibly before the students come back. <laughs> mm -hmm. What month would be best to do the budget at this point? It gets approved in May or June at this point. Um, the state will um, have their appropriation for us, our first calculation, in early May. Um, so that's when they'll have that to us and we'll know what it looks like. Um, and then the rollback rate comes out in July? Um, that one is in. Um, Yes, July. So would July be a good month to do budgeting? Probably because that's then I spend on the whole six weeks. So that it comes out July nineteenth. Um, and I think our meeting. Shall we push our? Yeah, it's. We push it off one week. We with with July we could we we could make the fourth Wednesday of the month. Let me tell you, as soon as it comes out, um, I already, I have to, my deadline, I have to have it to the, um, we have our meetings, the board tentatively approves it like the following Tuesday. And so I have to have it advertised ahead of time. So I am, that's a crazy week for me because I have to get my ads ready. I have to run all the numbers, yes. do all the stuff. So it's a crazy, crazy week so for me when it comes out. Your two meetings in August and so I'm in July. Yeah, I'm fine with that if you guys have one. She has to concentrate because if she, is that, if that ad is wrong or misspelled or whatever, then we have to pay for it again. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we have it to. It has to be done right away because by law, it can have, my ad has to be out so many days yes. before the board meeting. 
Yeah. And like this past year, in my 30 years in the budget department, the news press advertised it incorrectly. Oh. I w and of course, it was COVID, we were at home, and I was like, oh my gosh, and so I had to call and they're like, so when is the last day we want it in? And I said, I want it in tomorrow and I want it right. <laughs> so I was not very nice to them. And then they charged to tried to charge me twice. And I said, nope, you signed a document saying that you knew the requirements and you messed it up. You will give it to me for free. Yeah. So, yeah. But that's uh, that third week is that 21st, which there's no way I could have done it that yeah, week. No. Would it be okay with you if we did two in August, one the beginning of August, one the end of August? Instead um, of the third week, the first week, and the fourth week? We could do the 28th of July, the following one, because let me find out. I think our board meeting is on the 27th. Oh, is everybody okay with that? Yeah, Mary? I just wanted to make sure. I wanted to make sure you're from everybody. Because we'll, we'll have our tentative budget hearing on the 27th, if I got my date right. And then we can do it on the 28th. That would be the soonest I could do it. Okay, so what months are going to be open for? Um, June and August? And August. I would love for you, and I know I can wait for Christmas to come tomorrow also, <laughs> to see the audit reports. <laughs> I would love to see what the auditors are finding so that we know when we start coming up with our plan for next year, what areas we need to focus on because they've been spending an exorbitant amount of time on recruiting. Which you just said, Dr. Prue was here. I'm dying to hear what she has to say over this. Well, I'm dying to hear what RSM says about our recruiting process. Yeah. Well, you want to get them even on Zoom? What, RSM? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I asked them. Oh, okay. Uh, they were not. Your consulting basis. They're, they're consulting, yeah. and that would cost us. I understand. So I don't think it would be cost effective for us I to. I would to do that. I just love to see their report. Yeah, and I and I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I'm fairly respond to it. Say, I'm sorry, one more time. Over the report, I believe Paul said during June, and if it did, Dr. Prowitz here, I will go over the report and ask our question, and also see if Dr. Prowitz can be here just in case what happened last year happens again, and if she wants to, you know. I would have to align that with when they're going to present to the board um, because I don't know when it's going to be done. I don't have any idea of the timeline. And so until they present it to the board, that's their final thing. So it would have to be after that. So I could plan it, but it would have to be after the board okay. sees the presentation. So it either be June or August or 2035. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how, yeah. when that would be. And then we'll have all electric cars. But at least we have the next two months lined up with July. <laughs> like we did well on that. So when you talked about procurement, what was your thought process on procurement? I don't know. Well, I was talking, and I, I know from personal experience, prices are going up on everything. I know that usually we buy gasoline earlier, you know, or fuel earlier. How proactive are we really being? How is it affecting our budget? Um, there's many different angles to, you know, the different products that the school system needs and purchasing. And how are we trying to stay proactive instead of reactive to the price of inflation? Well, I wouldn't call this inflation. We do. We have a level of it right now. They don't really want to acknowledge, but yeah. we've seen gas prices. I don't know if it's, you know, artificially or not. I don't know if it's going to adjust that. No, we've seen gas prices where they started the beginning of the year and where they are now. They expect they to by the end of summer, they could be over $4 a gallon. I right? just heard recently well, that, that, that comes from the refineries and the Yeah, that's, that, 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 from the freeze. Yeah, I heard OPEX, you know, going to increase production the lower. I heard the Saudis are releasing. Right. There's a lot of Focus, factors. focus. Yeah. The price of products, like so, going through the road. Yeah, but I can tell you, right now, yeah. it's $5.65 a gallon. Yeah. 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 Okay, so I can I can, 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 can ask procurement to try and put something together. We do have bids that are out there that are going through the year. So yeah. right now, we're locked into those prices. Um, it's when we go out for new bids, it'll be different. I can ask them to come in again. We are without a director of procurement, mm -hmm. so I would have to um, 
find, you know, maybe Mrs. Malay could come in. Who's in charge of finding all these directives? Um, because it's, uh, I'm not trying to come off the wrong way, so excuse me if I come off harsh, but for the last few years, especially with transportation, one's in, one's out, we're constantly in flux. We need some more stability. That's one of the reasons why I really appreciate what Dr. Atkins has done. He has provided that steady ship. I mean, you may, we may, people may or may not like everything that he does, but he's always been steady. And he is run, I believe he's running the ship really well. But we have different departments that there's been a constant turnover. Who's going, who's working to fill that position? Because it's not like they're being filled very quickly. And I know there's talent out there sitting at home. So it would it would be the the chief of that areas um, to where they're supposed to be filling those positions. So um, you know, it's really within the different areas. Um, right now we're kind of you know, holding on some things, looking at some things to make sure our organization is the way we want it. So um, I know for a fact that Dr. Desimore is looking at resumes actually um, right now for the director of procurement. So, um, and that's, it is a long, it's a timely process. I mean, you, you have to advertise it, then you have to go through the resumes and on top of everything else you're doing, you know, it is a, a timely process, so. Plus, they want to make sure they're getting the right person. Right person. There's not going to be that turnover. Turnover, yes. Especially with uh, transportation. I mean, you kind of having people since I've been here? Like, at least, yeah. It's just a little shocking. That's why I'm asking the question. I hope I'm not coming off wrong, but, you know, that's really, to me, been. That's all I, been high. all I can I'm tell you is when you have good people. Yeah. They Everybody get stolen. Them. Yep. So and and we can't afford what other people can afford. So you know you just um, it is what it is. I can't. We can't control. You know when people come and steal our people away when we have good ones. So it it is what it is. So. Are, are you freezing positions and then a reorganization? No, we're not freezing positions. No. So. Speaking of transportation, uh, fleet management, you know, I know these little Chevy bolts that are electric only are like $20,000. I mean, as we look at it, maybe changing a little bit more over to electric vehicles rather than burning dead dinosaurs in our vehicles. So a couple of years ago, we looked at electric um, buses. <laughs> Um, but the cost of the electric and trying to make sure, because there is not everywhere, like right now you can't just go plug in anywhere. And so um, there was not enough area and they could only have so much usage. And so they would, we couldn't get as much use out of them as we could a gas bus because we could not, you know, there's only limited number of times that we could right. have them out. So and we couldn't charge them quick enough, I think, too, yeah. is what they were saying, right? Yeah. What about all other vehicles, such as uh, student driver for driver's ed or? That's with the county, isn't it not? Buses, if we switch to electric, would that be a savings? I understand the, the reason behind the buses, but what about these other ones? Um, I'm not sure. Um, you run into the same problem, like where are you going to charge them? There's only certain charging stations in the area. So if they're not in areas that you frequent, then you have to put them in. So then we have the expense of putting them in. So that, you know, you can not a capital budget, not a transportation budget. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it, it's kind of, it, it, you know, kind of plays off of each other. You have but, to look at the total cost. There's also the maintenance cost. The, the, on a fully electric vehicle, the only thing you have to really replace is tires and winter washer fluid. Battery, ultimately Not necessarily. Battery, yeah. Possibly battery. Brakes and computer. Possibly battery. Computers. But if you if, if, if you are rotating your stock the way you should, which the maintenance is, you know, it is, it is much less. I mean, that's why we were leasing vehicles at one time rather than purchasing them because it was a lower cost to get in. And by the time that we got out of those places, then maintenance costs were starting to get down. We also need to train our bus drivers because in 
I realize that I'm being recorded, but I'm watching some, the way some of these bus drivers are driving. It's apparent that we are getting towards the bottom of the barrel where some of the people are hiring. They're cutting off people along the six mile cypress to turn into the bus corral. Well, that's because we're getting offered money by the county and these dumpster, you know, these laying their hole in dirt for $25, $30 an hour. Whatever it is, give up. I'd be concerned about us going to electric vehicles and what the wrong type of driver to do to an electric vehicle. There's a certain well, I'm just starting to look at fleet management in a different, I'm, I'm thinking of looking at fleet management in a different way. Because if, if we don't have to worry about the price of gas, and we take that out of the equation, that's a, that's a savings to the district. If, even if we take capital budget, we put in these two 40 high voltage chargers, uh, you know, we're, we've got electric that's capped out at near 22 cents a, a, a kilowatt hour. Yeah, but if I'm if I'm taking one of our vehicles to a conference, that's yeah. going to save me money to take yeah. the vehicle to the conference because we pay more to the individual if they use their car. But then, how do I guarantee that I'm going to have an electric charging station between here and there? They are. They are becoming more and more prevalent. I mean, it, it just is. Um, but I will say, like, Mission Hill is one of them. You're out in the country. <laughs> You're not going to find a gas station, let alone You're a station. definitely not going to find a charging station. Some place to. <laughs> and then what do you do while you're sitting there charging? Uh, For uh, how long? Do work. <laughs> um, they do have live results of that. Yeah, it's yeah. an electric. Yeah. I just went car shopping one day, had one. Yeah, but if, I, I'm, if I'm mistaken, they're, they're more down. expensive than yeah. um, the regular car to go yeah, hybrid. One it's a $22,000 vehicle with a hybrid. For the car, but it was a $22,000 car. They had this 2020 on sale for $19.5. They got 50 miles to the gallon. You did not have to charge it. It ran off the gas. And once you reach a certain, below a certain speed, we don't have to go electric, but above a certain number, so you basically had to stay at the 55 mile per hour. You'd sometimes go to 60, but it was a cost benefit to how fast you need to get to point B. But there are vehicles out there. Again, something we could explore. Bill Gates has been very public about how he wants to get rid of this dinosaur. All somebody has to do is reach out to the Gates Foundation, and maybe there is money available if we want to be a data site for them. And, and I'm not going to get more work to the staff, but there is there are opportunities that if you keep reaching for it, you might be able to get lucky and find one of those avenues. That and, and, yeah. and even look at federal grants. Mm -hmm. I think when I first came on, we were talking about grants. Mm -hmm. Look at more federal grants and get yeah. them out. I, I, I keep asking them to go out and look for grants for different things, and um, it, they're, they're not as they're not out there as fluent as you all would think they would be for us. Years, the grant market's trying to up yes. early. It really is the subject I used to do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not referring to grants. I'm referring to the experimental yeah. or data site. These individuals are coming out and saying, we need to do, we'll put your money where your mouth is. We're offering our district for you to do it. And here's all the pressure you'll get from doing it. So we're welcoming you with open arms. That's all it is, and all they can do is say no. And I'm, I'm not talking about that long distance travel. I'm talking about district travel. I mean, when we got, you know, we've got pickup trucks, we've got, you know, <coughs> SUVs, we we've got the little uh, Chevy Cabriolets or whatever they are. You know, just our, our district vehicles. That we use the, locally. We, we don't just use the district vehicles locally, other than like our maintenance trucks and things. Um, we went, in order to save money, we stopped where I would have a car and Barb would have a car. It was 
there's a, a fleet of cars and when you right. need one you have to go and ask for it and they give you that and it's usually it's not just around going you know from school to school it is also going on those trips right and so we use our fleet that way to save money so that we don't have so many vehicles and we utilize them and they're not just sitting waiting for somebody to use it every once a month so i understand what you're saying but i'm saying that it would cost us more because we would have the local vehicles and then we would have vehicles that we would use for the the trips and right now we're and we use them as well i'm just being yeah. told I know you are. I know you are. And I, I wrote it down for them to look into it and then maybe bring back some analysis for us. Um, so I, I will ask them, you know, if that's something that they could look into and, and bring back some stuff. Things have changed in the five years since we worked at electric buses before, too. Yeah. Um, okay. When I was with the state, they gave up the fleet because there was a ma major maintenance issue, especially when they got old. And they went to just negotiating um, contracts with the rental companies. So we would just, um, it would make <coughs> sure. um, we would just go when I had to go to the East Coast a lot. We would just find the rental and bring uh, it back. I mean, you know, it, um, and it was a lot lower speed. Um, and so they had given up a lot of these fleets. Mm -hmm. But that could always be looked at as an option. Mm -hmm. That's definitely an alternative. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't even have to have a fleet. Yeah, they're, they cost a lot, and, you know, maintenance and repair. Um, and of course, it wasn't for local driving. We used our own car and just had the mileage. But, um, it was going on distances. Yeah. So, you know, it worked for the Department of Education. <laughs> okay, so we have our meeting set up for next month. We approve the cars going to get back to us with dates for the summer. Besides the one difference on July 28th, I believe it was. Right. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Uh, we didn't come up the 16th, did we? Did we come up the July 16th meeting? Or June 16th, no. I'm sorry. Did you want to look at the dates now? Is that what you're saying? Oh, I just looked. I thought she was coming back. Yeah, let's, 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 let's. Oh, sure, I'm sorry. Yeah. I just yeah. want the third, the third Wednesday yeah, for that I'm one. Fine with whatever. Um, was there anything else anyone wanted to add? Anything we've been talking about? Anything on the agenda? No, there was just some updates on the budget. I talked to you all about the CARES Act. Um, I will tell you that the governor's budget, did I talk about that the last time? It was a little ugly. Yeah, it, the, the governor's budget is usually the high mark, and even with the governor's budget, when you back out um, our health insurance increases that um, we're going to be providing, and the estimated retirement increases that the state has said that they're going to make sure that they um, increase again for us. It looks like we're going to be two million under um, short. Um, so, and that's the high mark. So it's not looking good um, right now. But you know, we'll have to wait and see what they start coming out with and things like that. So, you know, just letting you know where we are on that. And I will just let you know from a, a functional standpoint that they are going to release probably even this week it's the fourth week of session we're midway through this is usually when we start seeing the appropriations bills mm -hmm. where the house speaker and the senate president put forth their budgets into the appropriations committees and it's going to look ugly because they're going off of november revenue estimated conference numbers and they're projecting a $2.7 billion deficit at this point. So don't freak out when you see the budget because that's not the way that it is going to end up. There's no CARES money. There's no uh, rescue plan money in there. Um, but it will at least show you where their priorities are. Um, and you'll be able to judge from 
based on their budget, what the priorities are. So don't take them as, as you know, a, a dagger to the, the heart. Look at it from these are, this is where they're announcing their priorities. Thank you. No one has anything else to add. There's a motion to adjourn. So, second. All in favor? Are you, are you with us? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Like, yes. <laughs> Thank you all. Are you with us? <laughs> <laughs>